All right, we are live. It is June 9th. Uh, this is Shane Oglo, as always, with my partner Richard Hodges from the Rogue Traders, and this is Derivit Live, second episode. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's about rolling. And, you know, the problem is, is when we're rolling, I always get that song on my head that rolling, 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 keep them. But then again, if, if you're not from North America, you might not get that reference. But uh, Or if you've watched the Blues Brothers. Anyways, I think everyone in the UK certainly has watched Rawhide. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. All right, so let's see. We got uh, yeah, roll, 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 right on. <laughs> Let me just check what we got going on here. We're waiting for a few more people to join us before we get started. Uh, hey, let us know where you're where, where you're coming from today, where where you're at. Um, we've got a pretty international audience, and I will publish a little poll, very similar to last time. And we want to know where people's options knowledge is at so i just published that poll you should see the poll available on the right hand side and that's going to give us more information on what we should be delivering in the future what types of knowledge and uh how 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 we present it really so this is fantastic let's see where we got people from oh, oh we got someone from dubai there marcus there lovely germany excellent Roll until you're right. That's right, Antoine. Roll <laughs> until you're right. And even if you're not right. All right, on the chat. Singapore, hey. Wow. Sticky message up here. Let's see. It's three minutes after. We'll just give it another minute or so. More people are joining as we're talking, so that's great. As always, you know, if you haven't signed up for a Darabit account, you can save 10% on those fees. Use our little link up above. Save 10%. <clears throat> All right, Croatia, right on. Italy, Poland. St. Tropez. You know, I've never been there. That's one of my bucket list destinations, I got to admit. Have you ever been there, uh, Richard? I, I have, actually. Um, oh. I was deeply disappointed. I was expecting to find a, a cute little fishing village um, containing a French film star, but <laughs> I actually, it was actually full of American tourists. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine, fine. Uh, uh, Melbourne, excellent, excellent. Okay, good stuff. Let's make sure I got all my stuff here. Uh, I'll put up the slide while we're sitting here on the side waiting. I think we'll probably get going here pretty quick. Uh, okay. Got a few more people coming on, but that's fine. Uh, and of course, there will be a recording, so you can catch this stuff. So today, we're talking about rolling options, and we're going to make this relatively straightforward. And and Rolling options is something that every option seller is going to do. And you don't necessarily have to sell options, too. I mean, futures trade do it all the time. If, if you want to be long, you know, oil futures or something, and you buy a futures contract, well, when that contract comes to expire, if you want to stay long, you roll that forward, right? You buy the old contract back, you buy a new one, and you, you continue along. So uh, rolling is nothing um, all that exclusive to options, but, but we are going to talk about it more on the short side versus the long side. You can roll long options, too. So let me go ahead and everybody can see my screen, right? I just want to make sure I'm sharing the slide, the Darabit Live slide. I can see it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Great, great, great. All right, so let me just go back here so I can see my presentation. And here's the plan today. We're going to do, this is going to be the same plan every every week. We're going to do a current market analysis. We're just going to look at where the market is, or, or in, in our case now, where it isn't, right? Uh, review current trades and strategies. As we mentioned last week, we didn't have any strategies on. No trades on. I did put a small trade on last week uh, in terms of a strategy. Then we're going to uh, get into whatever the topic is of, uh, of the day. Today it's rolling and some different terminology. For anyone who doesn't know what rolling is, fine, we'll, we'll explain it. We're going to get into some alternate rolling strategies. So we're going to look at what people typically do or what they typically think about doing with rolling. We'll give it some alternate strategies, some more background information, some more tools and, and ideas. We're going to look in the Deribit platform. We're going to look at some uh, some interesting tools there. We're going to look at some options chains. And we're going to talk about when and why. Well, okay, here's the strategy. Here's the theory. Well, that's wonderful. When do I do it? How do I do it? Like what, what's going on? What's the mechanics and why would I want to do this? And when would I do it? Uh, we'll give you our insight on what we do when we do it. Uh, and as, uh, as we mentioned last time, there's, there's 
There's, there's a thousand ways to trade the market. So this is, we're going to show you how we do it. And then we'll get into a Q&A session. Uh, we expect today will be a lot shorter. We always want to keep things probably 45 minutes and under. So we want to leave at least 10 or 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So without further ado, let's move on. Um, so actually, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm actually going to I'm gonna share. This is a screenshot of my silly chart. Uh, I'm actually going to share my screen so I can write on there. And, da, 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 da. and do you guys see my silly chart? Yeah, Richard, you see it? Yep. Okay, cool. And I call it a silly chart because there's not much happening on there. You know, usually you look at some technical analysis chart and they've got Fibonacci's and it looks, looks like someone took a handful of spaghetti and threw it on there. And, you know, this is their, their technical analysis. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a certain type of trading that's great. But when, when I teach people to trade options, simple, man, simple is the best way to start. We're just looking for general areas where we expect things to happen. And that's what we got doing here. So I created this chart way, way back here in like, what is that? April-ish, May-ish, you know, like, like, like way, way, way back. Um, and nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. We can see. This continued trend line down here, it's held this sort of body. You know, yes, it broke through a little bit, but it's kind of stuck, clung onto that bottom. We've got nothing major going on. We're just sort of sitting, waiting for the market to drop. Now, I will say this. Coming up next week, we have PMI and we have the FOMC, start of the FOMC meetings. And well, a lot of people change, are... Change. Yeah, it was saying, you see that little drop just to the left of your circle? Um, that were yep. the, the, the drop in the, this the, year, uh, yeah. So that that was the um, uh, Gensler in the SEC um, ah. um, coming out against Coinbase and and um, what are they called? Yeah, um, the other guys, Union B Finance. There they are. Finance. Yeah. Um, so that was. Um, uh, I think we probably all expected that to get a whole lot worse, and mm -hmm. Bitcoin markets just seem to shrug off the, the news that it's now illegal to trade Bitcoin in America. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, this this stubborn stubborn clinging to clinging to this horizontal line is quite remarkable. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, is we've been saying for ages that we felt a little more inclined that we would see uh, things move to the downside, and we were preparing for that. I mean, and we're we've always maintained we're both prepared to be wrong every single time. And a lot of people might make the case that hey, if this thing's sticking to the bottom, it's either going to bust through hard. Or, you know what, we're going back up to the top of the range and maybe through. I don't know. Either could be correct. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't like to make predictions, but I, I do like to be, uh, you know, prepared one way or another. So let me just cl clean these up. Uh, now, what have I been doing? Well, I've been doing a couple of things. Now, for a long time, and just, just so, we, so we know, just so we're, we're very, very clear, this red line here, th these are the meetings next week, which some people are expecting some market move and, and, and they could be right. So we're either going to go back at the top of the range or we're going to bust through. I think, I think if we're going to bust out of this range, uh, you know, next week is as good a time as any. So what have I been doing in the meantime? Well, ever since I'm going to put the S of the selling back when I started doing this, I just been selling these low Delta. So these, you know, minus 10 to minus 15 Delta calls. And I've been buying low delta puts, which end up being sort of, you know, 2,400 to 23, 2,200, depending on when the, when the price was at that time, buying those puts. So these puts were free because I was selling these calls. Calls are easier to manage. If things would have rocketed up, I just would have managed those calls. And I was selling them short term. So in the month of May, for example, I was selling weeklies in May and up to the end of May into early June. And all those have expired, every single one you know, in the money. Uh, expired, uh, uh, kept all the premium. All the, the low delta puts, of course, expired worthlessly uh, because we didn't go down either. So I was just sitting there waiting because we know this 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 uh, trend is going to break at some point or another. So we'll see. I think that next week when we have our Deribit Live, it's the first time I'm really anticipating we're going to see, you know, this <laughs> or, or we're going to see that. I, I think there's if there's any week that you know in, in the past few weeks where I expected something to change, it probably would be this coming week. Now I did make one trade. I mentioned that, and it was in ETH. And look at look at this. I, I put spaghetti all over the place here. I told everybody not to do spaghetti, and I made spaghetti. What did I do? Well, I did a small calendar spread. That's it. Uh, I put this on. We can see back in May, and I sold 
Ethereum, and I decided to put this in price and not delta. I sold the 2,100 June calls. We can see this red line shows the expiry here. This, this is the June 30th. And I bought this green line, the July 28th, uh, 2,300 calls, 2,300 calls. This is a calendar spread. So this short calls will expire prior to the long calls. Now, why did I do this? Well, I wanted to earn a little bit of premium. I figured these things are probably going to stay in the range, but if it didn't, I'm protected. So this is basically like a vertical. But here's the thing. If this thing expires, if I let it go to expire, and I may not, I, I might choose to roll it. And we could talk about this later, actually, because Richard's going to have some specific thoughts on it. Let's say I roll it you know, near, near the end of, uh, of July. That's fine. It depends on where the price of, of, of ETH is. If Ethereum comes up, comes up here, well, I'm going to want to roll this. And I'm going to roll it up, you know, up to here, maybe up to here, maybe up to here. It depends where the price is. But the problem is, is if Ethereum drops, if we get a big move down, well, I'm still going to roll the darn thing, but I'm going to have to roll it to a lower strike price. And I'm not going to get a heck of a lot of premium, but I've got the long call in place, so I may as well use it. Uh, I could close the long call out, but it'd be practically be worthless by that time, I suspect, or worth not, not a lot. So, that's a calendar spread. That's the only strategy that I have on right now as we're waiting for the market to move. So uh, let me go back here and stop sharing my screen. Richard, do you want to talk about what you have going on right now or any outlook you have on the market? <clears throat> yeah, I can have a quick, um, yep. uh, a quick share of my screen. I can remember how to do it. Screen share. Um, um, uh, so there's the there's the little dip um, that we mentioned yep. last last week. Um, that, that was that caused vols to rise uh, momentarily. Mm -hmm. To it looked like it was dangerously as if vol was going to get up to sort of above, above forty again, and then and then um, of course a bit of the market shrugged off the news that the US is at war with itself and Bitcoin, and uh, vols dropped back down to sub forty. Um, Positions wise, uh, in Bitcoin, I have a, a, a whole chunk of um, risk reversals and calls. Um, they're all sort of getting nicely, nicely green. Um, the ones that aren't uh, were probably written recently, or they're long puts because we're just not not getting the down down, down move I'm kind of expecting. Um, that's uh, so that, that's just been been decaying away, and then ETH is a bit more um, chaotic. To this ETH book is one I've been abusing for the past um, half a year. Um, I, had, I had way too much risk on it until this week. Well, in fact, until today, because expiry has just gone through. So now my risk has gone from in the yellow and red. My uh, margin use has dropped down to sort of more reasonable levels. Um, 38 maintenance margin, by the way, if you're not hedging, dynamically hedging with futures, is probably still too high. You shouldn't really go above, in my view, 30%. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what we tell people is 30% yeah. is sort of that max number and that's keeping your powder dry, right? So, you know, and, and just, just to, for, for some context for beginners, if, if you're running 30% margin and you've got some positions that, and the market goes against you, well, that 30% margin can get gobbled up too sweet. So it's important to give yourself some room so you can adjust those trades. Um, yeah, and I, you can see that I've got some positions out in July and the same on Bitcoin. I've got some July positions, I think, um, uh, and, and a few August and September's, but in very small size. Um, so I found over the past month that being, being short the market beyond a month is just giving me too much bigger risk for the trouble. So, um, anything I sell now, I'm selling short dated. Uh, I'm getting less vol for it, but. At least it expires faster. I can get I can get rid of it if it goes wrong, and it gives me far more opportunities to roll out if I need to. Cool. Uh, yeah, cool. that's that's all for it. All right. So um, yeah, you can shop up your security, and I'll go back to the slides. So uh, it, it's very interesting time right now. We've had two months of not much going on. We never really anticipated this to happen. We, we thought every week there'd be wild, crazy action and doing all kinds of stuff, but it's been really, really quiet. And I anticipate things will change again. I mean, uh, you know, the crypto market, we, we, we have gone through, through periods of, of relative calm. But anyways, uh, so Richard, 
What's the one thing? What's the one thing that uh, you do before you roll calls? Uh, this is a trick question, by the way. The one thing I do before I roll calls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell everyone what you need to do. You need to take Rolinol. <laughs> Rolinol. If, if you're under pressure, you just take one <laughs> dose of Rolinol. And, uh, you know, you feel much better. You'll, you'll start getting sleep at night. You won't have sweaty palms. Uh, yeah. So just so everybody knows, I'm not a graphic designer. I don't think I'm going to be hired as one, but this is the best I can do. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay. So what is rolling a trade? Let, let's get into this. Rolling a trade is simply closing a position, whatever that position is, and opening another in the same underlying. So, so you're not going to, you know, close a Microsoft and then open a, a Bitcoin or, you know, it, it, you, you, you talked about the same underlying asset. And it's usually the same structure. What I mean by structure is if you've got a short call or you've got a, a put spread, you're, you're closing that and they're opening up a new position, the same type of position uh, further in the future. And now this new position will have different strike prices and or expiration dates. It can be done with longer short options, as I mentioned at the beginning. You can roll long options if you want to, but we're typically going to focus on short options. That's usually when people are getting in trouble, or not necessarily. There can be rolls, uh, other reason to roll short options, uh, like locking in profits. Uh, but usually we're doing it to extend time. We're, we're sort of buying ourselves more time when we're rolling options. Now, a little bit of terminology here. A trade can be rolled out. Out simply means further out in time. So today is June 9th. If I had an option today that I was going to close and roll out, I might roll that out to June 30th or July 28th, whatever. I'm just going further out in time. That's all that means. And it can also be rolled up or down. If I'm rolling up, I'm rolling to a higher strike price and I'm rolling down to a lower strike price. So if I'm rolling out and up, I'm rolling out to, let's say the end of June to a higher strike price. Okay, that, that's all that means. That's all you really know, need to know for terminology. So let's take an example here. Um, we're trading along Bitcoin and we're pretty happy. And there's this channel, it breaks up a little bit. And we decide at this point here, where I've got the arrow to sell a 50 day to expiration. DTE means day to expiration. So I'm selling an option, it expires in 50 days. And for that, I receive $1,000. Boom, 1000 bucks. Great, wonderful. And that strike is 27000 So the market's around 26000 ish We sell the 27000 call. Okay, this is a naked short sell, which we advise you not to do. But for simplicity, for explaining this, this is what I'm explaining. Got 1000 bucks Now, 20 days later, 20 days later, the market goes up. And it's near our strike price. It's farting around near our strike price. It's at the money. The option is trading at two thousand bucks. Remember, we got a thousand bucks for it. Now it's at two thousand bucks. We're a thousand dollars down on this darn thing, right? And we decide to roll that trade. So we got a thousand bucks in premium. It's costing us two thousand bucks to close it. So we need to find. We need to find somewhere $1,000 to roll to in order to be flat. That's not to lose any money, okay? Or if we want to keep that original premium, that original 1000 bucks, we need to find $2,000 somewhere in the market. We're going to scrounge around looking for it to make this pay off for us. So what we're doing is we're closing. You can see the X. We're closing this short call, that original position. So all we're doing is buying to close, okay? We're going to pay 2000 bucks, and now we've got to look for that money we found that money. We sold a 50 day to expiration, 28,000 strike. So we closed the 27. We opened a new one at a higher price. So we rolled out and up in order to keep that 1,000 of original premium that we received. So we, hopefully that, that process makes sense. So we got in a bit of trouble. It was at the money. We rolled it out and up. We found 2,000 bucks in order to keep the original 1,000 that we sold the premium for originally because we're down a thousand bucks. So I hope that was very, very simple. So interesting thing here, let's talk about this. We can continue just over, if the market just keeps creeping up and creeping up and creeping up, well, we can just keep rolling up and rolling up and rolling up, right? And there's an expression, roll until you're right. Antoine mentioned it in the chat. You can roll until you're right. But rolling 
isn't really adjusting position, really. It's sort of a Jedi mind trick, right? What we're doing is we're taking a loss. We're closing the first position out. We're losing money on it. And we're opening a new position to make up for that loss. But because we're taking that loss, we're actually reducing our margin a little bit each time we roll. So rolling until you're right has limitations. You can't do it forever. Now, no asset's going to go up forever. I should knock on wood, but I don't think that will happen. So it's got limitations. And if you're gobbling up a lot of margin, as Richard was talking about earlier, you might not be able to continually roll. That's why it's important to keep your powder dry. Yeah, on that subject, um, when you when I showed my my book, you, you'd have probably noticed that I had positions at every strike almost. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very meticulous about that. I, I never want to concentrate risk on any one strike because I never want to be in a position where I'm under pressure on margin and then have to roll a huge position uh, all in one go and make, make my mar put my margin under even more pressure. Um, so I'd much rather do it piecemeal, uh, bit by bit. It means you're having to adjust the book less per day. Um, and it also means your adjustments can be smaller. Yeah. And the other thing I like about spreading that out, Rich, is, is you're right. You're, you don't want to deal with one big problem on a certain day. You'd rather spread it out. Right. Because here's what happens. If you've got a big problem on a certain expiry day, a fear and emotion can come into play. And you're like, oh, the market's pressing against me. And you make this big adjustment, and then the market goes the other way. Yeah. You know, it happens. It happens. So if you don't have all that pressure on one strike or expiry, it's going to make your life easier. So the last point here on this slide is if your sentiment has changed, you know, if we were selling these calls and we think, oh, my gosh, you know what? We think this thing is just going to keep going up. There's news or this technical analysis, whatever. It might be best just to take the loss instead of fighting it forever. You know, for, for, for how long? You want to keep this rolling this for six months, nine months, 12 months? You've got better use of your capital. Or you can choose another strategy that will reverse your directional risk. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later on. So most commonly, the strategy is going to say the same, right? So if, if we've got, if we're selling naked calls or covered calls or, or call spreads, whatever the heck we're doing, uh, they're, they're done programmatically. You know, so, so for example, let's say you've got a system where you sell 50 days or 52 or 55 days out. And then you roll when you're about three weeks to expiry. Okay, great. And you just do that systematically, systematically. That's wonderful. I, I love systemized trading because it takes emotion out of things. So you got that naked short call option. You roll to another naked short call or you got a short vertical spread. You're rolling into a new short call vertical spread. Fine, nothing wrong with that. But there's definitely times where we may not want to roll into the same strategy. We want to roll into a different strategy. And that's really what we're going to start talking about here. So if you remember this slide, you know, it went up to 27,000 where our strike was. So we had to close it, right? We've got a thousand bucks. We had to pay 2000 to close it. Darn it. Right. So we had to find a thousand dollars if we wanted to be flat and not lose any money or 2000. If we wanted to keep that original thousand dollars in premium. So what did we do? Well, we rolled it up to a thousand dollar higher to, to the 28,000 strike. We sold that. We collected 2000 bucks and now we're going to wait. And hopefully for us, you know, the market will just go sideways, maybe go up a bit or maybe go back down. We can walk away and we can keep a big chunk of that thousand or maybe all of it if you let it go to expiry. Okay. That's the situation we were in. But what if, what if instead of doing that same strategy, naked call to a naked call, what if we rolled that into a strangle? And a strangle, for anyone who doesn't know, is whether you're selling at a higher strike price, a call, usually a, a call, and selling a lower price put. Okay, on each side of the market price. So the market price right now is around 27,000, right? So we're selling a 29,000 strike call and we're selling a 25,000 strike call. You'll notice now both these strikes are about $2,000 away from the current price. Now we didn't collect 2,000 for each. We only collect 1,000 for each, but we made up our $2,000 that way. So we got that 2,000 bucks back and we split our risk, didn't we? Very interesting. So why would we do this? Well, we're reducing that directional risk. We're splitting between short calls and short puts. Plus we're increasing the strike distance from spot. We're only going to potentially be wrong on one side, certainly at any one time. So we know if we're wrong on one side, if it ends up, let's say it keeps going up. Okay, well, we'll only have to roll that half the original position sideways. Those short puts are gonna be fine. We're gonna collect all the premium for those. Right. 
So we're reducing that. We're, 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 we're cutting it in half. And it's much more comfortable when you do that. Now, as we well, said, you know, also, worth, um, mm-hmm. also worth mentioning, Sean, uh, Shane, that um, the, that'll generally have a, a lesser impact on your margin bill as well because yes. the, there's less directional risk here. Yeah. There's a great, yeah. Great, more, great. More, more, more vega risk, but, but less, less directional risk. Yes. I think we're going to do a, I think we're going to do a call just on sort of managing margin and, and techniques because I think margin is uh, well, it's super important to know. So, and I think it's yeah. largely understood. Yeah. It's the only subject right, for, for reason. Yeah. So we talked about, Hey, we, we, we don't recommend selling naked calls and I wouldn't recommend just selling a strangle, a naked strangle either. You know, it's got some risk, but uh, again, these are demonstration purposes. So let's just change this right now. So because a strangle has risk because both sides are naked, let's just add some insurance. Let's add some insurance on both sides. And when we add insurance, well, now that's technically called an iron condor. How these financial people come up with these, these names, I don't know. But that's what this looks like. So here we are, 27000 We can sell at 28000 and get two grand, And we can buy the 29000 and spend $1,000 in premium. So we collect 2000 We spend 1000 in insurance. And we get 1000 bucks. Or protected on the upside. We do the exact same thing on the downside. We receive two thousand in premium by selling twenty six thousand puts, and we buy the twenty five thousand strike puts for a thousand dollars. So each side we collect a thousand bucks, and, and there's our two thousand we need to keep that original thousand we made when we sold, sold the, the naked call, right? But you'll notice this: the, the strikes are closer to, to spot. You know, the short strike is only $1,000 away from spot because we had to pay for some insurance. If we had the naked straggle, we were selling the, the, the 29s and the 25s, right? So there's different ways you can do it. And of course, we're not going to look at this today, but we can look at going a little farther out in time. We're going to get more premium because there's more time premium built in. We won't want to get into that right now. So if the original position was a short naked option or a short vertical spread, when do we prefer to change the strategy and roll into a strangle or roll into an iron condor, which, which might be more common and safer because you're protected. If it blows against one side, well, you've got limited risk on either of those sides. Well, it really depends on the market condition or if we have a particular bias. And we can also roll into a completely new directional bias, such as rolling a short call or a short call spread into a short put or a short put spread. So if I take a look here, let me share my screen again and I go over to uh, this Bitcoin chart. You know, if we've got the situation where, uh, let's say that we've, we, we've sold a put spread down here, okay? And we've got this market just goes, and just blast through, oh my gosh. If we think this, this support here that we were expecting to hold is not going to hold, was a chance it won't. And remember, if, and let me just draw a line here. If this line, if we think this is massive support and this thing blasts through it, well, guess what? That support now becomes resistant and I would expect something like that to happen. Okay. So do we want to keep, you know, rolling this down and then rolling it down and then rolling it down and fighting it and fighting it? Well, maybe not. Maybe not. And if it did come blasting down here, we might think, hey, it's just going to poke through. Well, maybe we'll sell a call spread, you know. Maybe we'll sell a call spread here and we'll sell a put spread down here. Now it's starting to look like spaghetti. So let me go over here. Oops. The point is, is we have these options available. If I think that there's big, big support, I've got no problem selling underneath that support. Selling spreads underneath that support, thinking it's probably going to hold. And it, even if it doesn't hold, it will support usually provides some resistance, but we can split our risk. If it comes blasting down here, hey, we can sell a put spread down here. We can sell a, a call spread up here, or we can completely reverse the the the, uh, the uh, situation and only sell a call spread, okay? We'd have to sell that call spread a little closer to the money to make, to make up uh, an, enough premium to make up for the loss, but I'm hoping you're getting the idea. Uh, so... Actually, on on that um, that slide, if you yeah. did get that, that big down move, then vols would probably be higher, which means that you could then get a bit more value in the put spread, certainly, that you're selling. 
um, <clears throat> but actually it would also affect the call spread, even even though the the market skew would be to the downside. Yes. The, the, the money vols would be higher. So actually um, you're still benefiting by rolling into, into the calls. <clears throat> yes. And I think it's important for people to understand that typically when prices drop, that's when vol is going to have the, the largest <clears throat> drops. When prices rise, certainly in the equity markets, you'll see this. That's when vols uh, drop uh, or get lower. And I, I guess the theory behind that is, uh, when things drop, it gets panic because most of the world is is long. You know, they're long stock or or whatever they happen. To, you know, they own it and they get panicky when things drop and, and, and vols rise. When things are going up, people are like, "Hey, you know, this is going up. I'm feeling pretty damn good." Uh, and and the vols t- tend to go down. So that's kind of the situation with that. Uh, let me go back to my slides. Uh, can we see my slides? Can you see my slides? Oh, let's. Uh, I. I... Put a challenge out to our to our uh, watchers yeah. in the chat to see if they could answer that question about why it's called an iron condor. <laughs> but uh, as no one's answered, I'll tell you, it's because of the shape of the payoff graph. Oh, yeah. It looks like a like a well, a body of a bird with flat wings. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've also I've also heard an iron condor called the broker's friend. Because if, you, if you're a broker and you're charging six pounds a lot for for each leg, then you're picking to pick up twenty four pounds a lot on that on that trade. Yes. Broker's, broker's friend. And the butterfly, of course, looks like a butterfly because it's got a little buddy. You know, we're not going to, let's not get into that today. All right. <laughs> so the point is, is if we're going to, if we're going to keep, if we've got a short call spread, we might roll it into another short call spread. If, if we think that, if, if, our, if our bias hasn't changed, but if we think, hey, we're going to be fighting this thing forever, I'm more inclined to split it into an iron condor or just sell, sell a put spread. No problem, and completely change my directional risk. So that is something that I want people to consider. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about here is we can also deviate away from rolling out uh, or, or change from, from rolling out to that standard expiry. So remember when I said at the beginning of people do programmatic trading where they're selling, let's say, the 55-day uh, option, and they're buying it back with you know 20 or 25 days to go, about three weeks left to go. Uh, or or, roll, or rolling that out. Fine, that's no problem, no problem, no problem. There might be times when you might want to change that pattern. You might want to sell the 40-day instead of the 50-day or the 65-day or the 70-day. And the reason why is if it's advantageous for you to do so. And we can spot opportunities by using the Deribit service volatility uh, tool in the platform. So let me actually go back to uh, go to Deribit. And you can see my Deribit screen? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, basically, if you, it, we, when, you're, when you're in the Deribit platform, if you go over to Trading Tools, and there's something else I want to show you too. Just remind me afterwards, just to show people how to, how to search for strikes. But if you go up here on the top hand left, is Trading Tools, and that's where you're going to see the volatility surface. And this is going to show you, the, the, there's, there's puts on the left and the calls on the right. And this is, you can see where the market skew is. You've got this little short term, you know, next day uh, expiry spike on each side, uh, one side or the other. And you can spot these little peaks and valleys all through uh, time, which goes out, uh, you know, to March uh, of, of next year. So uh, almost a year in, into the future. Sometimes you will see a big, uh, relatively uh, high peak, for example. So we can see a bit of a peak here that's. A lot of times these are end of the month uh, because end of the month is where most options uh, are, are being traded, not so much in the weekly expiries. But sometimes you can spot some interesting opportunities. So instead of selling here, you know, you might want to sell o- over here if you see this large relative difference. And that's another tool we can talk about another time, spotting relative difference on dips too. If we see something really, really cheap, you know, we see these these calls way over, uh, you know, let me, way over here being super, super cheap. Let's pick some of those up. Maybe vols will rise, but we can sell against them if vols rise as well. So we, we, can, we can talk about that later. But the point is, is we can use the service volatility tool to sometimes say, hang on, before I just go ahead and programmatically sell a 50-day option, let's just take a quick peek at the volatility surface tool and see if there's any other interesting opportunities. Today, I don't really see anything extraordinary. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just go ahead and sell it. Now, let's say we're selling options and we're going to roll. And we've got a position and we're selling you know, ETH and we're going to go into the future. Today is June 9th, for example. And we're going to look at selling 
out and possibly up. And we need to collect you know, $50, for example, per option. Well, all you're going to do is you're going to go to a further dated options. So you're going to go into options. And here I'm going to just look at June 30th, for example. And I'm going to look for 50 bucks. Well, here's 63. Here's 41. This is the 1900. And here's the 1850s. So it depends on what, what your strike price is. If you're at the money, you know, let's, let's say you're, you, you're, you're already short the 1850s. We might just want to roll it out in time and keep the same strike price. Nothing wrong with that. If we're looking for 50 bucks here, we're going to get 62, 63 bucks here. Cool. If we decide to go up in price, we're going to get paid less. So, we're, hey, we're not making enough. We only get 41. So we're going to need to go a little further in the future. So let's look at the Julys. Where do I, where can I pick up 50 bucks here in the Julys? Whew. Well, 2000s, I'm almost getting there. But if I sell the 1900s, you know, $50 higher than the current market price, whew, I'll be making a lot more. Those are kind of not too great numbers, but this is pretty close, right? These 46s. And this is where we can say, hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable with that. I might just sell the 2100s and only get 27 and then go over here, sorry, uh, on, the, on the put side and look for 25 bucks over there and make it that way, right? So if I want to make 25 bucks, I could sell the 16s and I could sell uh, the 2100s. And that's my long strangle. If I wanted to turn that into the iron condor, I'd have to pull the strikes in a little bit closer because I need to buy insurance. But you just start to play with these numbers because you know what you're looking for. You know what you sold the option for. You know what you have to buy it back for. Now you know what price you have to go shopping for. You know, we're out just going shopping. And that's what we're doing. We're just looking through these option expiries, figuring out, okay, how do we make this number up? How do we find this? Where's my bias? Where's my directional risk? Do I think this thing's going to blow through the roof? Well, I don't want to maybe sell it another call spread. Maybe we'll look to split it. Maybe we'll look to sell put spreads. If you're not finding the value you want, and this is another important point, uh, I'll, I'll get to it in a second. We might have to go further out in time. Oh my gosh, we might have to go to August. You know, we're going to pay a lot more because there's a lot more time premium in there. But there's more time in there, right? There's more time to be right. There's also more time to be wrong. And I think Richard had a good point last time, Richard, when you were talking about uh, rolling at the money options versus once it gets in the money, right? Yeah, if you go back to the 30th of June, 1850s, yeah, and look on the call side. On the, on right the here. Yeah. yeah, so you see currently they're trading at sort of, what, 61, 63. 10, 63, 88. Yep. But the implied vol there is around about 35% the mid. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, 34.9. So and that implied vol is about the lowest you're going to see on that on that column. It's a little bit lower at 1900 oddly, but um, that's mm -hmm. an unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's interesting, interesting actually. Slightly up. Yeah, it's just cause I think because the market's just skewed to the downside a bit, and mm -hmm. so when you're at the money, the the skew has more effect than than the curvature of the, of the surface. Um, so it, uh, we mentioned in the last the last seminar that we did that. Um, on, a, on a relative value basis, the best time to roll is when the option's at the money because you've got the least implied vol courtesy of being at what I call the bottom of the smile. Um, yep. And so you want to, if, if you're going to roll out, you really want to be rolling further up the smile because you want to be getting more value and you want to be giving yourself more opportunity to earn money from hedging the futures and turning spot moves into, into um, theta. Um, which we kind of discussed last time. I probably blasted through people's expertise level and we need to do a special course on this because it's quite important. But, yeah. Well, um, I think the important thing here is when we look at this low, low implied volatility is 34.9%. And we look at the difference between the cost of these, like the strikes 1850 to 1800, for example, hmm. you know, uh, 90 versus 60 bucks, right? Uh, but you've got some money this there because the market's at 1850. Yes. But if we look at, let's say, let's say you had this, uh, you know, 1600s, for example, for mm. some reason. If we look at the difference between these strikes, uh, the, the same distance between the strikes, but the value of these, how, how much it's, it's increased, like 243 versus 149. That's almost $100 difference, right? Because of that intrinsic value. Yeah, so you, uh, you, uh, you definitely don't really want to be paying intrinsic value when you're rolling, for sure. Uh, I mean, if you've been hedging with futures, it doesn't matter. You're, you're because you'll have already made a profit to cover the, the loss due to increasing intrinsic. But yeah. um, I, I think the point is, is, is don't wait to get in the money if you can help it. 
roll them at the money, you're going to do yourself a favor. It's a lot easier to, to roll. It's kind of like this, the classic tra um, trading adage, isn't it? Which is always take losses early and get comfortable. Um, yeah. I also wanted to mention that when you're rolling, if you've got plenty of margin left, then you can always increase the position size as you're rolling. So you can then roll to a, to a further out strike. Mm -hmm. And that um, has particularly added benefits when the uh, if the vol, the vol in the later month is higher, which it currently is, if you're rolling from June to July now, you probably get more vol for July than June, because I think June's been pretty heavily sold. Sold. Um, certainly true in the first two weeks, the first, um, the 16th, the 24th. So if you're rolling from there to June, you definitely get more value. And if you increase your size, it means you can go further out. If you're going further out, you're going to get more smile, therefore more vol. And so your position may look less comfortable in terms of the amount of risk that's on, but actually it might be, might be a better value position. Actually, Richard, could, let's, I think we talked earlier about sharing um, some, some aspects of the smile. Why don't we do that? Uh, yeah, if, sure. you could, if you can show that and kind of explain graphically what you're talking about with that, because this is, this is very important when it comes to rolling. So I'm going to go to this um, rather nice screen here, options data um, on Durabit. You can see here, um, <clears throat> The expressing volatility in terms of strike at each month. This is Bitcoin. Um, and so the 6th of June here, uh, you can see that this smile, it's kind of more towards the the puts. Um, actually, yeah. Fair, yeah, uh, yeah uh, fairly flat around um, the up monies. Um, and you look into, if you're rolling, from, say, from June to, to July, you can see that we go from this quite flat base in June around the money to uh, quite a quite a, a marked curve in the surface in July. So that seems to me to be like good rolling territory because if I'm rolling the twenty, what's the market at now? Twenty six. If I'm rolling the twenty seven thousand June thirty call into July, then I'm going to be rolling down to twenty five and up to twenty eight, twenty nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe more, probably 30,000. So I'm starting to pick up some, some extra value. But actually, if I go out a few more strikes and sell a few more calls and puts, then I'm picking up, like, uh, I'm going up from, what, 38 to 45 volts. So it's like mm -hmm. uh, seven volts. That's enormous. That's um, a big difference. Well, it's, that's one uh, fifth. It's 20% um, value increase. Hey, Richard, if you remember at the beginning, I told people that I put a strategy on because we're sitting here waiting for something to happen. I put on a calendar spread. I sold some Ethereum uh, June 30th, uh, 2100 strike, and I bought the July, the, the month of July, July 28th, I think is the expiry, um, 2300 calls. Uh, and my plan is, is I'm going to either buy those, those June, I think about 55% ROI, so I should probably buy the June back now. Um, but my, I can keep selling against those longer dated. So if we can, let, let's show people how we can use this data in ETH to determine maybe what's going to happen if, if the market goes up, the market goes down. So what was, what the, was the... the 2100 the, was the short. The sorry. short, and the, the long? June. And the longs in July, what's July, right? July 2300. Okay, so you're, you're currently paying 40 vol for your, for your um, cover. And the twenty one hundred is trading at about forty volts, so you've actually got very good value cover because um, you're not paying any any vol premium for that cover. Mm -hmm. uh, I, to be honest, since you're covered, and um, if the market rises up to your twenty one hundreds, you're, you're you're pretty safe, I would say. Yep. So I would actually leave that position alone and let it let it start to decay because you're going to get loads of decay now from the the yep. short the, the, the 30th of June calls. Two weeks away, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, the, the the July cover isn't going to decay that fast. And then you might be able to do something else with, with uh, July. You could sell some some more calls yep. even in July. Just use the same cover. Yes, absolutely. And I think an important point is is I'm very, very comfortable. If the market tanks, well, <laughs> there's a, uh, you know those, those options uh, that I sold, those 2100s are going to expire worth this year, I'll buy them back for next to nothing. If the market starts to press up, let's say next week we get some news, and I hold on to these. Uh, I should be covering them anyways because they're, you know, I've collected a lot of the premium already. Hmm. And the market pushes up to 2000, for example, or getting close to 2100. I could buy those back and I can sell 
2,400, 2,500. Who, who, who knows you know, what, what, what the vol is going to be? And I've got that long 2,300 in July. So that would turn from a short spread, originally sold a short calendar spread. It would turn it into a long vertical spread at that time, if that makes sense, because it would be a long spread because my, my closer strike is long. My further strike is short, but they both expire on the same time, right? They both expire at the end of July. Looking, uh, to be honest with you, 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 you might have a bit of negative, negative um, delta on that position. You, could, you might be able to buy a couple of futures and just let the market drift up into your 2100 call. And okay. then you can pick up the extra time decay, pick up the profit of the futures. And, and I, yeah, yeah. Th th sorry, I, I just, finish that thought. So, yeah, sorry, and then and then, uh, then you can, well, then when you buy that uh, call back, um, well, actually, you've probably got profit on your cover then as well. You could mm -hmm. um, even just sell the cover, you'd, you'd make money. I want to just introduce one final little concept here. Um, so last week we talked about hedging with futures, and we talked about, you know, how you can use futures to offset things you're not sure or, or, or take some of the sting off positions. We can also use a little bit of that knowledge and apply it here to rolling. So let's say you've got a position that things are starting to go not your way and you decide to roll out. Well, you don't have to roll the whole thing. You can roll part of it. You can split it. You can reverse it. You can roll the same strategy out. But you can also buy yourself some futures to take off a bit of that thing too, even if it's just temporary to wait and see what happens. So we can start to blend these different strategies into what, you know, people like, oh, rolling simple. You just, you take this position, you close it, and you, you sell a new one. What's, well, actually we, we can get very nuanced with this. And it really depends on your market bias, your outlook, what's going on. I mean, th there's a hundred different reasons you might want to do this. So is there any advice we can give people there, Richard, when it comes to hedging off futures as part of a roll? Well, I think like we said last week, hedge early and hedge lightly because you don't want to get caught out by a sudden reversal. Yeah. So, you know, you can under hedge with futures quite safely. You can always trade the future, you know, back and forth as, as your market's going up if you if you want to get more cover on. Um, and you are always always going to be um, achieving uh, delta decay. So in that calendar spread, the delta of the of the short call is going to be decaying much faster than the delta of the long mm -hmm. call. So your futures are going to become more effective as time passes anyway. Um, so, so that's really the main thing is it, um, having a hedging 10% of your, of your delta is better than hedging none of it and probably better than hedging half of it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have time to get into that. We, we've, we, as always, we talk too much, we go over time. So I want to get into the Q&A pretty quick, but I, I think the point here is, uh, you know, options give you options. There's a reason why options are called the Lego of the financial world, because you can construct any kind of risk or profile. You, you can build them. You can use them to build any kind of a profile or payoff that you want. Uh, so don't think that you need to uh, just have a standard. And there's nothing wrong with having a standard way, but sometimes if you're not comfortable hey, there's options. There's other things we can do. We can completely change the risk with a roll. Why do we have to roll the same darn position? We don't have to. We can do whatever we want. We can roll half of it and take some futures. We, we can, we can uh, I guess I'm just trying to beat this to death by saying you have options. So as always, uh, or, or, or not as always, but as last time, uh, we are offering you know, seven bucks for 14 days access to Rogue Trader Academy. Again, Rogue Trader Academy, brand new. We've just got the one foundational course in there right now. More courses coming soon. If uh, Especially if you're new, it's a great place to start. Uh, but it also gives you access to our Telegram channel. So if you're more experienced, join us with Telegram channel and you can ask questions and we'll, we'll post our trades in real time there. So with that said, uh, let's talk about Q&A. Do we have any questions coming yet? I didn't set up a... Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's oh, a Q&A only yeah. channel here. I've got, I can see three questions. One from Antoine. Okay. Um, How do you roll long if you don't collect anything up front? So the, the the option that you're rolling, the long option that you're rolling, has some value, has some time value in it, or even some intrinsic value. And so what you're looking to do is roll to another, another um, say, put um, further out um, at the same price so obviously if it's if you're running a put 
it's you're going to roll it to a long to, um, a, a lower strike at a longer date to cost the same money. So whereas when you're rolling a short position, you're paying to close the position and then receiving premium for opening the new one. In, in, when you're rolling a long position, it's the opposite. You're, you're selling to close. So you're receiving premium to close it and then you're paying to open the new one. Um, and then we've got one from G. Uh, yeah. Are the risk reversal based on spot slash vol correlation or on those directional trades? So th this was, uh, I think, in response to seeing my um, my book. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I am kind of bearish on the market at the moment. So I'm happy to be um, short risk reversals. And I'm actually paying to be short them. I'm paying more for the puts than I'm collecting on the calls. Um, um, and I'm actually, but I'm actually also delta hedging with futures to keep the delta ne neutral in the book for the time being. Um, my thinking is this: um, when the market does go, it's going to go fast, and it's going to go into my um, my puts before I can hedge them. So I'm going to pick up gamma. Um, I'm probably going to pick up Vega as well because vol is certainly going to spike if we get a good two thousand or four thousand dollar sell off then I would imagine the current baseline 35 vol is going to be more like baseline 50 vol. Um, so those puts are going to double double or triple in price. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to care about the calls. Um, and then I'm into a long gamma situation where I'm um, gamma hedging with, with futures uh, until I can sell, get more, sell more risk. So mm -hmm. that's just, that's just a bit of my, my thinking about how to trade the market at the moment. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult market, market to trade, right? Because there isn't much movement. There isn't much vol. It's basically yeah. going sideways. So whether you're trading spot, futures, long, short, nobody, nobody's making any money, right? It's you just got to position yourself for when it's going to break out. Yeah. And if it breaks out to the upside on a risk reversal, I'm I'm perfectly happy to delta hedge it manually and and, and just ride uh, ride it up. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, a question from uh, Mia here. Maybe you can show when a calendar is too expensive and time premium versus same tenor. Uh, I, I guess you're referring to that ETH calendar spread I put on. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean here. I mean, I'm not going to put... So, so typically when you sell a calendar spread, if you're selling the front month, the closest month to you, so let's say it's June 1st and I sell a June 30th call and I buy a July 28th call, I'm not going to collect as much money as I had to pay because uh, there's less, less time premium in there. Uh, but I do expect that I'm going to sell multiple times, at least two times, against that long call, and I should more than make up for it. Uh, now, typically, anytime you're selling, you're, you're hoping that the, the vol is high in the short month and, and lower in the, in the long month, um, and vols will continue to rise uh, once you get out of that first one. But... Once you have that long call in place, you have options because it doesn't matter what the market does. I might not be able to sell that much and make that much from it if the market tanks. Eh, whatever, you know. I, I took you, but if the market goes up, you know, I'll, I'll be able to, to make more money back. And, and, and you'll, you'll have positions on the, on the other, other side for that. Um, it, you're, you're, it's all about playing the odds, really, isn't it? Um, but it's, it's worth also remembering that you, you shouldn't consider each position as its own discrete thing that's got to make, make money. Sometimes you're happy to have one position that's gradually losing money while other positions are making money faster. Um, and you, you just have that, that long position on to protect you against sort of any adverse market movements that you can't hedge while you're in bed or you know, sleeping. Yeah. And that's another good point about, let's say the market goes up 30% tomorrow for someone, some crazy news. Well, those puts, you know, three, four, five, six, eight months out are going to get a lot cheaper real quick. Hmm. Good time to buy them. You know, just, just don't spend too much money, but, but buy a bunch of really cheap puts because there's a good chance the market might start to come. It, you know, not saying those puts are ever going to be in the money, but we can use those puts and sell puts against them on any moves down and make them pay for themselves plus. So it just gives us options. You know, put, if, and you could always hedge those right away too. You could buy those puts and hedge and just sit there and wait. I, I, I know people who spend like 10% of their profits on buying um, far out of the money puts low, or, or low delta puts, which actually brings us to the next question. Um, mm -hmm. Are you guys using delta as a proxy for probabilities being in the money? Uh, Shane might say that. I wouldn't. Um, 
I use Delta just because it's when you do this a lot, um, you stop caring about the actual dollar values of the strikes, and all you care about is the deltas and the deltas you read off the vol surface, because you get you if you're delta neutral like I tend to be, you tend to care about selling options at the highest possible um, vol and buying them at the lowest possible vol. So what I do is I look on the vol surface to find out where the, at what delta is the highest vol, and then I'll just buy or sell that that delta, and that. Um, that just happens to be at some strike, which I kind of ignore. Um, when you're kind of trading classic, classic retail, where you're tend, you tend not to delta hedge that often, um, you you do care about strikes because you care about how far from the money you are. So you think you think in terms of dollars of moneyness as opposed to delta. Um, but for me, who delta hedges, well, depending on the book I'm trading, it's either every five minutes or two minutes or hour or day. Um, Delta is kind of a more appropriate thing to measure, to care about. Um, that's all. Okay. Uh, and Manvu, uh, you asked a question about uh, where to see the courses we have in the academy. I just sent you a, a link. Uh, next question here from KDC. When we're talking about long or short spreads, do we always refer to the near leg, i.e. a short call spread, short uh, the near strike, uh, long the further strike, and long call spread, long is the near tenor? And short the further tenor. Uh, so if it's short, if it's a short spread, uh, it, it means you're making it, that. That's the closest strike. Yeah. If it's a long spread, uh, that's the close. You're you're buying the closest strike. You've got to be careful here. Different markets have different conventions. If you go onto like interactive brokers, um, you'll see that they they call they talk in terms of bull call spreads and, yes. and bear call spreads. Um, I just talk in terms of call spreads. And as far as I'm concerned, yes, the the the, the you price that you talk about the spread as if you're always buying it. So you think about buy the buy the close to the money, sell the far from the money. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to sell that spread, you just reverse the two. Yeah, and if 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 someone says, "Hey, I'm short this strategy. I'm short whatever strategy happens to be," it means they made money. It means they they collected some premium. And remember, whenever we're selling, we're limiting our uh, profit to whatever we collect. We can adjust that later on, but that, that's the initial strategy that's what we're doing. If we're ever buying, uh, we typically, uh, it doesn't mean you have unlimited profit, of course, because it can be a, a spread, but uh, you're, you're paying some money up front. Uh, question from Mia, are you still short those puts? Um, I don't have any short puts. Maybe Richard is, do you have I, short I, puts? Yeah, I've yeah. got a load of degenerate short puts on my ETH book. <laughs> <Degenerate>. <laughs> Um, I, I, well, a load of them expired today, actually. Um, okay. But I still got a bunch of short puts through the next three weeks of June. Um, yeah, but I'm delta hedging very often on that on that that, that book. I'm just picking up. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm just picking up. Um, yeah, about forty five dollars a day in theta on that. It's a twenty thousand dollar book. So uh, I, it's gone from being a hugely degenerate book that was paying me one hundred and fifty dollars a day with 70% margin use to a fairly sedate book, paid me $45 a day with 38% um, uh, maintenance margin. And I'm short more calls than I am puts, to be honest, because I'm always a bit wary of selling puts, particularly when vol's been low for a long time. And, you know, the, the Bitcoin markets, uh, by, by which I include ETH, do tend to have a horrible sell-off every 100 days. And we've been, you know, we're getting well over that now. It's kind of like the um, the, um, the sort of that big national park in America full of volcanoes. Um, <laughs> the super volcano, Yellowstone. Yeah, or, or... So it's, yeah, it's kind of, you know, that's, that's apparently over to you as well. It goes off every 600,000 years. And um, so I'm kind of wary of being too short puts at the moment. But okay. that's where the money is because that's where the skews on the downside but the the professionals um, are all telling me that they're buying downside at the moment. Okay, and there's a follow up question that it says, "How do you protect those yourself?" But you're you're saying you're hedging all the time, so I've got I've got a on that book. I'm running a automatic delta hedger, which is looking at the market every five minutes, and if the um, delta gets bigger than a certain threshold, it, it sells or buys perpetuals. But um, if I was trading that um, at retail without 
mechanical help, then I would sell put spreads. Um, and I'd be accepting that I might suddenly go blotting through those at some stage. And I might have, find myself having a day of frantic hedging with, with, <laughs> with futures while it all calms down. Yeah. Uh, we're getting uh, lean on time here. Uh, so let's see, a question from Gene. How to choose what to roll when having multiple positions and looking at your overall portfolio? That's a really good question because it's mm -hmm. easy to start to just you do one strategy and you get another one on, another one on, and, and the, you start to lose track of, hey, was this a spread or what, what was this from? And, and you lose track and, and, and you probably end up uh, are better off looking at it from a portfolio view versus an individual uh, strategy view. And one thing I will say about that is when things get so complicated, I need to go in there and I need to clean that book out uh, because you don't know what's going on. You're not sure. Hang on. The market goes up. You get you look at your overall delta and you're trying to figure out old positions. It's just gets very, very confusing very quickly. Uh, but what's your suggestion there for managing that uh, on a portfolio level? Well, I would I, I never really care about individual positions. I care more about the risk of the entire book. And so, and so does Arabit. So does their margin system. Um, so I tend to, <clears throat> if I've got, if a position's got like more than 25 days to run and it's at the money, at the result of a strong rally, and I, I think it, the market could sell off again before it, before it dries on up again, right? So maybe, maybe I'll wait because I'll, I'll, I'll let some of that time premium come out. Maybe just sell a put, a put against that call and take in some more premium to give myself some more time. Uh, I'm talking about hedging without um, hedging without futures, uh, as Ekrem is, is asking, right? Um, then, but if I start, if it starts to get close to the close to expiry, like certainly within two weeks, I definitely don't want to be sitting on a 50, 50 delta option uh, um, short position. It's got a massive gamma. It's probably it's relatively good time decay, but that's not going to outweigh the gamma risk I'm running, uh, particularly in a, in a crypto market. So I'm definitely going to want to roll that away um, out to a month or two months, even um, depending on how, how scared I am. Um, but I would try, I would just take it on a strike by strike basis. Just look at the ones that are, that are getting close to the money and just deal with those, and then leave the rest for time to time decay to do its work. That's probably how I'd do it. Right. Another question here, uh, Ekram. When you are <clears throat> short straddle, eighty days out, the price tends to hit 0 0.01 delta very frequently, taking into account not being a good future trader, how do you manage such a position? It seems that future hedging will most probably eat your profits away until expiry. Uh, so it, that depends on how often you hedge with futures and how, how well you do it. Um, uh, if you just, let's say you're, you're short, I don't know, one Bitcoin of call spread um, and you've got a delta of, I don't know, well, minus 0.2 bitcoins, and the start market starts to gain momentum going up. Then you might want to just buy 0 0.05 bitcoins of futures, right? Um, you don't want to get too aggressive, and you might just want to leave it there. And you could just leave that futures position in, regardless of what the market does, and regardless of whether that short call eventually ends up in the money or not. Because um, if it does end up in the money, then then that that future is going to give you. Um, more firepower to roll to a, to a higher strike because you've already got PL in the future. And if the future isn't making money, well, you took in premium for your short call. You can always sell another one. So it kind of it mm -hmm. then becomes kind of no different to just selling um, covered calls or it's even that a covered call. Right. So uh, there's no need to sort of sit and day trade that that future. You're just sort of putting it in there to to mm -hmm. um, under, undermine the trend of the market. Um, having said that, I do trade futures oft, often. Uh, I mean, I think in the past 24 hours, yeah, I think we traded about 50 times as the market bounced up and down. We burned a bit of money, but we made more money in full decay and time decay and full decay. So we don't really mind. It's, it's a it's a game of trade offs, right? You, what yeah. you give, as long as you give less than you than you get, then you're you're, you're winning. All right, next question from KDC. Do you guys trade dailies? If yes, for what situations? If no, why do others trade them? What cases do you see? So, Cause, Oh, because they're nuts. <laughs> so I was just going to say yes, sometimes I do. Uh, so here's the thing. 
If you're trading the dailies, you've got to be sitting in front of your computer trading. Now, this is gamma trading, right? So if I'm trading something that's expiring today or tomorrow or even this week, you know, we've got a really high gamma. And that's what, if you're sitting there, if you're a technical analyst and you think, hey, the price is coming down, your, your triggers, your alarms are going off, and you think this is, it's going to cross your technicals or have a bounce or bust through or whatever you think you might be happening, that's when you want to pound in. I'm typically buying an at-the-money option. Uh, we're close to at-the-money, looking for that quick uh, gain uh, price movement and selling it. That's when you can do a thousand percent on a day on, on that trade or, or 200% or, you know, you start to pull in those big numbers, but that's a completely different game. And you got to be sitting in front of the computer. I do plan to have a course because uh, that's what I did for it for a long time. I haven't really done that a lot in the last uh, seven or eight years, but I do, I would like to run a course on that uh, in, in the, in the near future. Cause it's a lot of fun when you've got a bit of time to do it. I love doing it, but I just don't have time to do it all the time. And I don't tend not to trade dailies except for a few cases. And one would be coming up. We've got the um, the Fed's announcement coming up on Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. So you can be sure that the vol on the expiry of that of that Tuesday is going to be higher than the one than, than the day after. Mm -hmm. um, so what I might do, given that I've got the, you know a computer here sitting in auto delta hedging for me, I might um, sell the overnights um, to for the um, FOMC day and then buy the the options for the day after uh, something like that um, right. because the because the overnights will be trading at more like 80 volt and the day after will be more like 40 volt so I could pick up that volt decay okay uh, one last question we've got to go we've run over time but that's okay uh, I think we always want to make sure we try and get all the questions answered uh, Sylvanius asked can you totally hedge a short call with futures um, if you hedge uh, constantly, yes, you can you can mimic the payoff of a short call with futures. Uh, however, you are going to pay spreads and trading fees every time you hedge. So you are going to follow the court, the, the options um, price action, but you are going to um, lose something in in the trading. So there's a trade off. Um, between the, uh, the the more often you hedge, the more you're going to pay. Um, but the less frequently you hedge, the less accurately you're going to model that uh, options pay off. And what I can tell you from certainty, uh, having done a lot of experiment experimentation with this, is if you keep your your position size low on e on each strike, or you split your positions across multiple strikes, and you leg you leg into your positions on a day by day basis rather than all at once then actually hedging daily is, is generally, generally enough um, to mitigate the risk of, of uh, going through your strikes. Um, yeah. th and if you, you, can, you, you can get slightly better performance by hedging hourly or even uh, less, um, but the difference isn't, isn't so big, right? So actually, even if you're retail, uh, hedging systematically daily is, uh, is, a, is a wise thing to do. Yeah, like dollar cost averaging. There you go. Mm. Hey, that's it. Let's let's wrap it up today. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, it was a uh, again yeah, interesting topic. Uh, I, I, rolling is something that every option trader has to do at some point or another. So it's great we can talk about. So next week we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about covered calls. I think which is interesting because covered calls are the most common uh, option strategy out there. But uh, there's some things you need to know, and there's some common pitfalls that make them maybe not always the best choice. So we're going to talk about covered calls, synthetic covered calls, uh, and some other good stuff around that. So join us next week for the next Darabit Live and for us over here at Rogue Trader Academy. Thanks for joining us.